Hello everyone, welcome to Family Tree DNA webinars. My name is Elise Friedman and I am the webinar coordinator for Family Tree DNA. Today's uh, presentation is an introduction to Family Tree DNA. This is uh, going to be a pretty basic intro, um, primarily geared toward those of you who are not familiar uh, with uh, genetic genealogy testing or not familiar with uh, family tree DNA specifically. Um, those of you who do have some familiarity with us may uh, also learn some new things here if you're not familiar with all of the tests that we are going to be uh, talking about today. A um, couple of quick housekeeping items before I get started with the presentation. Um, number one, uh, this presentation is being recorded. So um, those of you who are attending live will have an opportunity to um, go back and view the recording uh, after the uh, presentation. Usually the recording is available within about 24 hours um, after the live presentation. And if you know anybody who has um, might be interested in this presentation and uh, couldn't attend today, uh, they will also be able to access uh, the recording later on as well. So. Um, uh, also, um, during this presentation, uh, you can ask questions, and in order to ask questions, you'll just go to your, um, it's either the questions or the chat panel that you have, um, and you can type your questions in there, and they will be sent to me on my computer screen. Um, on, uh, and then what I do is during the presentation, if you're asking a question that's uh, directly relevant to something that I'm currently discussing, if you're asking for clarification, then I will certainly try to um, answer that question right away. If it's something that is of a more general nature or, or is uh, you know, better left for another part of the presentation, then I will hold uh, that question for the end of the presentation. We will do a final Q&A at the very end. Uh, so you know, any questions I don't get to during the presentation, uh, certainly we'll try to answer them all at the end. Uh, and I think that's it for the housekeeping items. Uh, other than that, uh, just uh, enjoy. And I hope uh, all this information today is helpful for you. All right, so first things first, uh, here's the basic agenda for today's presentation. Uh, so we're going to talk about just a um, basic intro to genetic genealogy. Uh, what is it, what it's not. Um, uh, so you'll get an overview. And then we're going to talk a little bit of science. Uh, for genetic genealogy, you definitely don't need to be a geneticist or a scientist, but uh, it does certainly help to have a basic understanding uh, of how DNA actually works um, so that you it'll help you understand what the tests are doing for you and which tests you'll want to take um, if you haven't uh, tested yet. Then we'll take a look at the My FTDNA page, which is where the results uh, will be posted uh, for your tests. Uh, everything that we do is online. Um, and so you'll have a private account called MyFTDNA that you'll have access to where you can uh, see all your results. Um, and then I'm going to go into what's really going to be the majority of this presentation, um, which is an overview of each of the three different uh, kinds of core uh, tests that we offer um, so that you really get a good understanding of each one and can really make that uh, knowledgeable decision uh, as to uh, which tests are right for you. And that'll kind of summarize which tests. Um, that you might want to consider taking. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about some uh, family tree DNA resources, upcoming webinars that we have, and then we'll do our final Q&A. So the presentation will take approximately an hour. Um, so that it, we, we might go a little over an hour with this particular presentation. Um, it does, uh, there is a lot of information here because I want to make sure that people leave this presentation, uh, you know, really understanding, uh, you know, uh, what, what our products are and what they can do for you. Um, and then uh, certainly I'll, I'll stay on as long as, uh, as long as I can for uh, questions afterwards. All right, so. So what is genetic genealogy? This is sort of just a summary that I kind of put together. So genetic genealogy is. It's a cutting edge tool. It's actually been around, at least commercially offered to genealogists, um, for about uh, 14, almost 15 years so far. So, but it's still cutting edge. It's still science. Um, that enables genealogists or really anybody interested in their family history and their ancestry. You don't have to be a genealogist necessarily to do DNA testing. Um, to use this DNA technology to help supplement your traditional 
genealogy research, so traditional paper trail research. Um, it, it's uh, a best as a tool uh, to use with your paper trail research, although not everybody's able to do that. Some people uh, don't have a paper trail and uh, use DNA testing uh, uh, because they don't have the paper trail. And it's identifying people, our relatives, who share DNA. Basically, you inherit DNA from your parents. They inherited it from their parents, etc. So you share some amount of DNA with your relatives, with your cousins, with your aunts and uncles, with your nieces and nephews, um, with your grandparents, great-grandparents, great-greats, etc. Um, and the, the type of DNA and how much DNA you share uh, depends on what type of DNA we're looking at and also um, and, and how far back actually the common ancestor is. So uh, we'll, we'll talk about some of that. So what are some of the main goals of genetic genealogy? Why do people do genetic genealogy tests? Um, some people do it to verify their paper trails. Uh, some people do it to help break through their brick walls. You might be stuck on your paper trail. Uh, connect with relatives who you never knew you had. Uh, some people view that as a good thing, others may not. Um, but uh, you'll definitely, uh, through genetic genealogy testing, connect with other people who share DNA with you. Uh, you'll learn about your family's deep ancestry and ancient migrations. And you can also discover your biogeographical or ethnic ancestry, basically a percentage breakdown of your overall ancestry. And so each of these different types of things um, can be done with uh, the differing uh, DNA tests that are available. So I'm going to show you some scenarios um, that, and, and kind of, you know, generally just throw out, you know, a question doesn't have to be answered, uh, you know, is, you know, can, can DNA testing be used for these things? So uh, in this first one, it's a fairly basic family tree, although you'll see it currently has only men on it, um, and their last name is all Smith. And so the question is, is this family tree correct? Or, you know, for example, are we sure that Bob Smith and Bill Smith are brothers and that their father is John Smith? Um, you know, are we sure that Bob and Bill actually share the same paternal line in general? Um, and, and we can use DNA testing to help us with uh, this type of scenario. Then let's say we have a scenario here where we have two different Smith families. Uh, two different Smith lines, and we want to know whether they're related to each other. We don't know the father of John Smith and Joe Smith in this uh, particular scenario here. So can DNA testing tell us whether these two Smith families actually are the same Smith family? And yes, it can. Now, that's the paternal side. Well, what about the maternal side? So now we have... Um, two different uh, female lines, maternal lines, let's say. Um, and yes, I do have a male down here, but we're looking at his mother's line. And in this particular case, we happen to have, they go back to, uh, to women whose maiden names are Williams. So are those two Williams women, are, are they sisters? Um, could they be sisters? Uh, they do have the, the same last name, so could they have the same father, and that's why they have the same last name, and could they also have the same mother? Are they full sisters? Well, we can look at the maternal side of that and see if they actually share the same maternal line uh, with uh, maternal line testing, mtDNA testing. And then we have this scenario where, again, you just have a branch of a family that you don't know who, let's say, the, the, the mother of Francis Williams is, can you potentially find out? Or can you potentially connect with other maternal line branches of this same family? And uh, you can use DNA testing for that. And finally, do you know all of your cousins on any ancestral line, male or female, doesn't matter if it's paternal line or maternal line, same surname or not, do you know everybody? You probably don't. You probably should all know, your, most people know their first cousins, unless you're adopted and don't, you know, or don't know your parentage. Um, but typically, you know your first cousins, probably know most of your second cousins. Some people don't know all their second cousins. I didn't know some of mine until I started doing genealogy. Um, I still don't know some of them in person. Uh, do you know all your third cousins, fourth cousins, fifth cousins, beyond? Uh, and most likely, at some point, you get beyond where where you know who all your cousins are. Um, and so and DNA testing can help you discover other cousins uh, who 
would be connected to your family tree. So there are all different types of scenarios there. Um, and then, of course, I don't have a slide for this, but you know, we have scenarios where people, uh, uh, for people who are adopted, um, people who don't know their father um, for you know, various reasons. And so you know, those types of situations can also, um, DNA testing can also help with those. So basically, Family Tree DNA has three different uh, core types of DNA tests uh, that are available. And each test does something different. Um, basically, each, each type of DNA is, if you think of it, it's kind of like a different record. You know, it's kind of like, you know, a, 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 you've got a whole bunch of vital records, but they're not all the same. You've got birth records and marriage records and death records. Well, it's kind of the same thing with DNA. There are different types of records of your DNA. So we have the Y chromosome, which only men have. Women biologically do not have a Y chromosome. And so, and the Y chromosome is passed down from father to son every generation. So essentially, it traces the direct paternal line, the father's 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 father, etc. Um, and this is most used for surname studies. And just like the examples that I was showing you with the Smith, uh, you know, branches, the, the, the male branches, and the reason why those trees only had men on them, the first couple that I showed, is because Y-DNA only looks at those male lines. And so it'll look strictly at the father's 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 father, et cetera. And so uh, the, the vast majority of um, what really got genetic genealogy started was these surname studies. Somebody was a Smith, they wanted to know what other Smith they were related to. And that's what the Y DNA test is primarily used for. Um, then we have the mitochondrial DNA test or the MT DNA test. Uh, this test, both men and women can take, but it looks at the mother's line, and it's the direct maternal line, the mother's, 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 mother, etc. So a male can take this test because he inherited mtDNA from his mother, um, but there can't be a male in the ancestral line. So mtDNA doesn't look at, say, the mother's, mother's, father's mother. Uh, you know, if, if you were to test yourself for your mtDNA, it looks at the mother's, 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 mother, etc. So Y-DNA and mtDNA are kind of similar to each other in the fact that they are very specific ancestral lines. The Y-DNA is strictly father's, 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 father, etc. mtDNA is strictly mother's, 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 mother, etc. So when you do those tests and you get back, you'll see some examples in a little while of um, how we show the results and, and the matches to those tests, you know what line of your ancestry, you know what line of your family tree you need to look at to see how you actually connect with your matches. And you know it has to be on your direct paternal line or your direct maternal line, depending on which test you did. Now, the third type of test is a little bit different. Uh, we call it Family Finder, and it's an autosomal DNA test, which uh, the autosomes are actually the vast majority of our chromosomes, and I'm going to go into a little bit of DNA in just a few minutes, so you'll see that. Um, and it also includes the X chromosome, actually. Um, and the Family Finder test can also be taken by both men and women, and it can it basically looks at all lines of your ancestry, and it can identify close relatives and cousins via any of your ancestral lines. And so, and that's the case for both men and women. So uh, there, there seems to be, because the very early days of genetic genealogy, only Y-DNA was available, there was sort of this um, party line, I guess, you know, if you want to call it that, that got started, that, well, DNA testing can only be done by men. And that's not the case, and, and maybe in the very first couple of years, yes, because it was only Y-DNA testing. Then mitochondrial DNA testing came along, and women could look at their direct maternal line. But then family, the autosomal test came along, and that changed the whole thing completely, because m women can now also do a DNA test that looks at uh, their paternal side of the family, just in a different way than the Y chromosome test does. So, so these are the three core tests that we're going to be talking about today. Now, I also want to talk about what genetic genealogy is not, because it's really important to understand what genetic genealogy can do for you and also what it can't do for you. Just like anything, yes, there are limitations. And so the very first thing to understand, and you probably have already gotten the gist of this just from what I just explained with the different tests, is that genetic genealogy is not one size fits all. It's not a single test that's going to give you everything. There's different types of DNA. And so there's different types of DNA tests, and they have different uses. 
um, you know, depending on what, what you're doing. And, you know, not every test is going to be right for for every person either. Um, so I guess I, I kind of can add another bullet there because I kind of want to, you know, say that too. You know, one type of test might work well for, for one person for what they're interested in, while another type of test might work better for somebody else, again, because of what their, what their goals are and what they're interested in. Um, genetic genealogy is also not magic. <laughs> um, it's, it's not going to provide your entire family tree. Uh, you know, you're not going to get results back and have your family tree laid out for you. And uh, some, uh, there are people who do unfortunately have that misconception and then, or maybe not quite to that extreme, but then get, and then get disappointed when, when the results are, are, are not quite what they thought that it might be because they didn't understand what genetic genealogy really can and can't do. So, you know, it's not going to lay out your, fa your whole family for you. Um, genetic genealogy is not health or medical um, a health or medical test, and traditional genetic genealogy tests do not provide health or medical information. Yes, there are DNA tests out there that can provide health or medical information. There are companies that uh, do offer both ancestry and health-related tests, and so, you know, it's really important to understand uh, what you're actually, uh, what kind of test you're actually getting. Uh, you know, when, when, you, when you order a test. And so when you, when you order a test through Family Tree DNA, you are not going to get any health or medical information from it. Um, how do you do a DNA test? How do you actually provide your DNA sample? I actually uh, go to genealogy conferences and, uh, you know, uh, man the uh, Family Tree DNA booth in the exhibit halls. And every once in a while I have somebody who uh, comes up to me and says, so are, are you taking my blood sample? Where's your syringe? And I cringe at that because I have absolutely no interest in taking people's blood. Um, I would not be doing this if that's what I had to do. Um, I'm not a nurse and or a doctor. And uh, now DNA collection for DNA testing or for genetic genealogy testing is very simple, very painless. Family Tree DNA uses uh, cheek swabs, buccal swabs. Basically, you, they look like a little toothbrush you can kind of see on the screen, and you actually rub the inside of your cheek and your mouth, and then the cotton swab actually, uh, there's a little plunger there, and you push the cotton swab off into the tubes that are provided, and you mail it back to us. Um, and, and then our lab basically does, I, I don't want to call it magic, but they, they, they do their work. So, um, yeah, so actually taking the DNA sample, very simple, very painless. Um, you do it in the privacy of your own home if you're going to order a test of family tree DNA and have the kit mailed to you. You don't need to go somewhere to take the DNA test. Um, some people do the tests at genealogy conferences, and they sit there right at the table, and, and, and we swab them. So um, very easy, very painless. And then just a really quick history of genetic genealogy. Um, family tree DNA was the first commercial organization to offer this DNA testing to genealogists, basically, and so, and I really think that, uh, you know, people who aren't familiar with the genetic genealogy industry, um, you know, that's something to be aware of. And so, basically, how this got started, I mean, certainly, uh, DNA testing is certainly not specific to genealogy, um, and, of course, you know, previous to becoming, to getting applied to genealogy, uh, it was used in, you know, academic studies and, you know, general genetic studies of, of, uh, of humans, of animals, of whatever else. Um, and so there happened to be a study done in uh, 1997. Um, a couple of geneticists, uh, Michael Hammer and Carl Skoretsky, decided to use DNA testing to determine if Jewish men with a tradition of Cohen ancestry, and for those who are not familiar, basically it's supposed to be a direct paternal descent from a biblical figure, Aaron. And so the, the idea was, well, that if Y-DNA is passed down, father to son to son to son to son, and if this Cohen tradition is also supposed to be passed down from son to son to son to son, then everybody today who has this tradition of this Cohen ancestry should theoretically share the same Y chromosome and, and have matching Y chromosome. And so this study was done, and I'm not going to go into the details of the study. Basically, uh, to summarize, yeah, I found that there, there, were, there, were, there were a very large percentage of people who did indeed match uh, who claimed Cohen ancestry. Uh, there were also um, uh, people who didn't, and that's for various historical reasons, which you can read about outside of this presentation. Uh, but the bottom line is, is that this study was published, um, and it essentially proved that Y-DNA testing could 
you know, be used for this sort of thing. And a couple of years later, um, our family tree DNA's uh, now president and CEO at the time, he was uh, an entrepreneur and basically an amateur genealogist himself, and he read the study. And he said, well, if it can work for the Cohens, for the Cohenim, then couldn't it work for anybody else? And so he contacted Dr. Hammer at the University of Arizona and said, can you test my family? And uh, so Bennett tells this story much better than I do, but basically Dr. Hammer kind of laughed and said, yeah, we get phone calls from crazy genealogists, you know, periodically asking, and no, we don't test genealogists. Um, and, and he apparently then suggested, you know, somebody really should start a company that offers this. And, well, that's what Bennett ended up doing. So he actually put together uh, a business plan and actually worked out a deal with Dr. Hammer's lab um, to actually do the testing, and Family True DNA was launched a year later in April of 2000. So, um, so Family True DNA was 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 the first company to actually bring this commercially to genealogists. Um, th there was an organization that was doing this uh, as, as a nonprofit type of of thing, you know, ahead of time. Um, I think probably even around the same time, but but Family True DNA was the first company to start offering this. All right. So, so that's the, the, the basics of genetic genealogy, how it got started, what it is, et cetera. Um, I am going to talk a little bit of science, um, and I, some of this might be a repeat of some of the things I just said as I was giving my, um, some, some of my explanations of the different tests, um, but I think it's important to at least get an idea of uh, what it is that we're actually looking at in our DNA. So this is one of our cells. We have, what, billions or more cells in, in our bodies. Um, and so inside um, each of our cells, uh, in the center of the cell, that's the nucleus of the cell, we have chromosomes. And we all have 23 pairs of chromosomes. Um, and they're in pairs because we get half of our chromosomes from our mom and half from our dad. So they get paired up. Now, outside of the nucleus, kind of floating around in our cells, um, we have a bunch of other things, but one of the things in there is called mitochondria. And the mitochondria, um, they're basically the energy powerhouses of our cells. They're what give our cells energy, um, but they also have DNA. And so, and those mitochondria are passed down from mother to child. So, uh, we, so we have the mitochondria and then we have the chromosomes and that's what we look at for DNA testing. So these are our 23 pairs of chromosomes. Um, you'll see that they're numbered 1 through 22 and then the last pair is uh, the X and the Y chromosomes. That's uh, pair number 23. The first 22 pairs of chromosomes are known as our autosomal chromosomes. And then the 23rd pair uh, is our sex chromosomes, and they're called that because the X and the Y determine whether we're male or female. Uh, a female will inherit two X chromosomes, one from mom, one from dad. A male inherits one X chromosome from his mom and one Y chromosome from his dad. And so basically the fact that a child has a Y chromosome, but that's what makes a male a male. <laughs> so um, at conception, when a Y chromosome gets passed down, uh, if, if a Y chromosome gets passed down, that, that child's going to be a male. So if we were to actually look at each of these chromosomes, they're, they're very tightly coiled up DNA, and they form what's known as a double helix. Um, and if you untwist the double helix, it, it, it kind of looks like a ladder, so it's also called, sometimes you hear people call it a twisted ladder, um, and each of the steps or the rungs of the ladder are the building blocks of our DNA, and there are four different bases, or nucleotides is another word for it, and they're, um, they're called adenine, cytosine, thymine, and guanine. You don't have to remember those, not going to quiz you on them, but if you just remember that there are four building blocks in A, C, T, and G, the letters they start with. Um, you're not going to need to know that for the very basics of genetic genealogy, just to decide what test you want to take, um, but it's something just good to know kind of going forward, because um, it, it'll come in handy later on. And so basically these A's, C's, T's, and G's, they kind of line up, um, and uh, when, when you untwist that uh, double helix there, um, and that's your DNA sequence. And every individual, uh, if you were to look at all 23 pairs of chromosomes and your mtDNA as a whole, 
every individual is going to have a different overall DNA sequence, with the exception of identical twins. Identical twins are identical because all of their DNA is identical. Uh, but other than that, even you and your siblings who are non-identical, if you were to look at all of your DNA overall, there are going to be differences. But there are going to be parts of your DNA that are the same. And so, for example, two brothers both inherit the Y chromosome from their father. And so that Y chromosome that they inherit is going to be the same for the two brothers. And that Y chromosome then gets passed down to their sons and essentially stays the same. Um, there are some minor changes that can happen along the way, but essentially the Y chromosome gets passed down intact. Um, same with the mtDNA, when it's passed down from mother to child. The, the mother's complete mtDNA sequence, all of the A's, C's, G's, and T's are passed down pretty much intact from a mother to all of her children. Um, on the other hand, the autosomal DNA and the X chromosome, they're a little bit different. They're a little more complicated. So, um, you know, so, but, but it, so it, just to basic understanding is that, you know, Y-DNA, MT-DNA passed down pretty much intact, uh, autosomal DNA and X, uh, the X chromosome not necessarily passed down intact. Um, so just to summarize all that really quick, so in each of our cells we have 46 chromosomes or 23 pairs. Um, 22 pairs of those are autosomes, that's the vast majority of our DNA is our autosomal DNA. Uh, the 23rd pair is the sex chromosomes, females get two X's, males get an X and Y. Um, everybody has mitochondria from their mother, and then uh, the DNA is made up of those four bases. So, so that's it for a, a really quick genetics 101 there, just to give you some brief understanding. Um, and then we'll also talk a little bit more about inheritance here. Basically, I'll demonstrate some of what I just showed you. So this is a basic family tree, an ancestor chart. Uh, so down here at the bottom, we have a happens to be a brother and a sister here. It could be multiple brothers, sisters, mix, whatever. Um, and, then, you know, two parents, four grandparents, eight great-grandparents, 16 great-great-grandparents. Um, of course, this is, you know, assuming that you don't have, you know, cousin marriages and ancestors who married each other and all that good stuff, which some of, a lot of our trees do have, kind of skews our trees a little bit. But in general, this is what your ancestor chart would look like. So the Y DNA and MT DNA, as I was explaining earlier, are very specific on the line of your tree that they're going to look at. If you test yourself for Y DNA or MT DNA, you basically can erase all of kind of the ancestors in the middle of your tree, and basically you're left with a V, just the outside lines of your ancestor chart. This is your direct paternal line, direct maternal line, and so the Y DNA gets passed down from father to son to son to son to son, and then the MT DNA. Sorry about that. A little bit too quick. Uh, the MT DNA gets passed down from mother to child, and in this case, because it's an all-female line here, it has, it's, it's mother to daughter, daughter, daughter to daughter and son. And just remember that a male does not pass his MT DNA down to his own children. He has it. He got it from his mom. He can be tested for it. His children don't inherit it. Instead, they inherit the MT DNA from their own mother. Now, the autosomal DNA, on the other hand, looks at all ancestral lines. So we're not going to erase all those ancestors in the middle because with autosomal DNA, we can connect with any of our ancestors. Male or female doesn't matter. Um, so that's completely irrelevant here. So, All right. So to summarize all of that, Y DNA, strictly father to son, passed down mostly intact, and it's the direct paternal line, the father's 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 father, et cetera. MTDNA is passed down mother to child. Men do not pass down to their children, and it's the direct maternal line, mother's 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 mother, et cetera, if you're looking at the ancestral line. And then autosomal DNA is um, passed down equally by both um, – I actually wrote that wrong, is uh, it's inherited equally by both male and female children from their parents. Uh, so both men and women inherit those 22 pairs of autosomal chromosomes, and, you know, one half of each pair is from mom, one half of each pair is from dad. And then I also put in here, and this is important to understand, that autosomal DNA gets diluted by 50% every generation. And, and here's where 
uh, things are a little different in how autosomal DNA is inherited. Whereas Y-DNA and MTDNA are passed down pretty much intact from generation to generation, with autosomal DNA, you only inherit half of each parent's autosomal DNA. And the reason for that is because you inherit it from both parents. So you can't inherit 100% of each of their autosomal DNA, or you'd have twice as much autosomal DNA as your parents. You'd basically be a clone of your, both your mother and your father. Right? Does that make sense? So what happens is that you inherit only half from each, uh, half of each parent, and, it, and it's random. So, you know, you might inherit uh, one part of chromosome, you know, one, um, and, and, and remember that your parents all have, have uh, pairs of each of their chromosomes. So let's say your dad has, you know, his, his pair of chromosome one, well, you can inherit one half of his pair completely, or the other one, basically, or a mixture. You could basically inherit a part of uh, one of the chromosomes from chromosome one and then a part of the other one. So it, and that's a random biological process that happens. Um, we can't predict um, exactly how, uh, you know, what we're going to inherit, but, and, but that's what makes us different from each other. And that's what makes siblings, uh, unless you're identical twins, different from each other as well. So, you know, if you think about it, you know, you might have the same eyes as your father, but the same nose as your mother. Um, you know, you and your brother may have the same eyes that you both got from your father, um, but maybe one of you got your, you know, mom's nose, the other got your father's nose. Well, that's all defined in our DNA. We're not looking at traits like that for genetic genealogy. I'm just trying to kind of equate it to something that, you know, you can think about from real world experiences. Um, so and so and so the reason uh, one of the important reasons to understand why uh, that autosomal DNA gets diluted by 50% every generation is because it's also important to test the oldest living relatives when you're looking at your ancestry. So um, you're go if rather than if you're able to rather than testing yourself for autosomal DNA, if you test each of your parents, then that will give you 100% of each of their DNA instead of only 50% of each parent's DNA that you inherited. So, um, and that gets you kind of further back in, in your genealogy when comparing DNA. So uh, hopefully that, that, that all makes sense. So, um, all right, so that's it for the, the real genetics uh, part of this. But let's uh, take a look now at, you know, how, what does all this look like when you do these tests? Um, you know, what do you actually see? So the first thing I'm going to show you is the My FTDNA page. Um, and as I said in the beginning, this is your personal account at Family Tree DNA. Um, this particular account, this screenshot here, is actually uh, from my grandfather's account. And um, basically, there's a bunch of it. Everything that you need is basically going to be on this page. So up at the top, we have a My DNA menu, that's where all of your results are actually going to be posted. Under My DNA, you'll have options for Y-DNA, MC-DNA, and Family Finder. Um, and so uh, you can always get to this menu from any page within your account, so it's easy to do that. Um, wh while you're on your home page, there are also some quick links here to easily get to your results as well. Um, but you don't always need to come back to this home page to, to get to your results. You can just use this menu up here. Um, you'll uh, see here that you have um, a history of the products that, that you've ordered, the tests that you've ordered. Um, uh, and your basic profile information is shown here. You can um, update your profile information. Um, things like your, your mailing address and your phone number, um, th this is shown just to you. Um, there are definitely, you know, privacy uh, settings uh, within your account, and so your matches don't see um, your phone number and, and, your, and your mailing address uh, unless you want them to, but by default that is turned off. Um, your matches do see your email address. Um, I've actually just uh, blanked mine out in here because I had my personal address in there. Um, but uh, but your, your email address will be here, and, and your email address will also be displayed to your matches on the matches page, which I'll show you in a little while. Um, and that's how you contact each other. So, you know, uh, genealogy is very collaborative. Um, it, it, it works best when you collaborate with other people, and so same thing with genetic genealogy. Um, 
Family Tree DNA also has projects, which I'm going to talk about just briefly at the very end, but it's another way to collaborate pe with people. Um, and so you can join projects. Projects are completely free to join once you have an account at Family Tree DNA. Um, and so and they're all different types of projects that I'll talk about. Um, and then you'll see that for each of the different types of tests, there's actually different pages of results. You're not going to get just one page of results. You're, you're going to get different things. And I'm going to show you just a few of these um, in just a moment. Uh, so, but that's ba basically, uh, you know, what you'll see here. So, um, so just a brief list of features um, within MyFTDNA. Uh, results of each test, um, if you do YDNA and MTDNA testing, you can actually print out a results certificate um, that will have your results, you know, listed there that you can add to your genealogy records or hang on your wall, whatever you'd like to do, um, or just add to your records. Um, you will get your matches, your DNA matches, names and email addresses. Um, you can create family trees or upload your family tree um, in, within your My FTDNA account, and you can view the uploaded family trees of your matches. Um, and actually, we, we very recently just launched um, a, a much more upgraded family tree called My Family Tree um, from, from our, our previous system, which used to be just a pretty basic display of, of somebody's pedigree. Um, and uh, you can also, for Y-DNA and MT-DNA, you can see people's most distant known ancestors if they've entered that information. There are privacy settings. Um, you can see your complete order history. You can order upgrades or more testing if you want. And then there's links to educational resources, such as our, our learning center, where these webinars are, um, and, and much more. So basically, everything kind of gets controlled from your MyF to DNA page. All right, so let's go and take um, a little more detailed look at each of these um, tests and what information you'll see. So just a quick highlight, a recap of, of YDNA. We've already talked about that the most common use of it is surname studies, you know, Smith versus Smith, are they related? Um, uh, then we also, when you do a Y-DNA test, besides the genealogical component of it, there's also a deep ancestry component. And so, um, and you'll automatically get that, and it's something called a haplogroup. And the haplogroup represents your geographic and deep ancestral origins of that same direct paternal line. And um, a haplogroup, for example, uh, you might see a haplogroup that's called R-M269, or in a, um, and that actually is, is a specific position on this great big uh, deep ancestral tree, uh, kind of if you think of a family tree, but in a much broader perspective, going back thousands to tens of thousands of years, uh, you'll be on a different branch. People are on different branches of this paternal line tree. And so you'll get that information, um, uh, basic information, and there's much more advanced stuff you can do with that uh, later on. And then Family Tree DNA offers five different test levels for Y-DNA. Um, basically, for Y-DNA, we test markers, which are essentially segments of the Y chromosome. And the more markers that are tested and compared with other customers, the more precise your results and your matches are going to be. And I'm going to show you uh, in just a moment uh, some, some time frames. So just be aware that we do have five different test levels. Um, so this is essentially what the raw results looks like. So if you do, for example, a just a 12 marker test, which is our very basic entry level test, then you'll only have this first panel here of 12 markers and their values. And what we're essentially doing is uh, everybody gets tested for the same markers, the same segments of the Y chromosome, but people have different values there. And the values are, it's essentially the length of the segment is what we're measuring. And um, so you'll get these values back, and it's these values that are what determine whether you match somebody else. We compare your values to the values of other customers in our database. And if you match people, for example, on, if you match uh, somebody on all 12 values, they'll be displayed as a match. Um, and so then you can do more markers as well. So this, uh, these results actually came from my brother's account, and I've tested him for 67 markers. So you can see all of his 67 values here. Um, and he has matches um, at the 67 uh, marker level as well. Now, with Y-DNA, you don't necessarily have to have um, an exact match. They're, they don't, they're not all exact. You can, you can actually have some slight differences, as, as I mentioned before, that Y-DNA is passed down mostly intact, but there are little mutations that happen over time. 
Um, and so, you know, you may actually have matches with people that are not exact, but like one marker off, for example. And so, um, and, and, and we'll show you that in your results. So this is what the matches page looks like. And uh, you'll see here um, that basically I'm given um, a, a list of my matches names and I have blanked them out for this presentation for privacy. I don't want to violate my, my own matches. Uh, Privacy, actually, my, my brother's matches, uh, privacy here. I left just some surnames listed. Um, but you'll see that so we do provide you with their names. Um, you'll see that the names are underlined. If you click on the underlined names, that will actually pop up a profile for that person. That will, that's where um, you'll see their email address and any other information that they chose to make available on their public profile. And again, that's something you can set in your own account, what you want your matches to see when they click on your name uh, and look at your profile. Um, we also tell you um, this uh, steps column, actually, I think uh, this is an older screenshot, uh, it's actually called genetic distance now, they both mean the same thing. Um, basically, uh, for example, a, a one step or one genetic distance means that it's not an exact match, there, there's one difference is essentially what that means. Um, and so we tell you how many differences you have, um, we'll also tell you um, how many uh, markers your match has, has actually tested, just so you know whether they've, you know, tested more markers than you or, or whatnot. Um, and uh, we have, you know, some other cool features here. You can actually um, uh, store some notes for yourself about somebody. Let's say you email somebody and, uh, you know, and they email you back and they give you more information about their ancestry and you don't want to lose all that in your, in your email program, you can go ahead and, and create a note for yourself next to that person's name, uh, you know, that says, you know, hey, this person gave me this information, or, or just make a note for yourself that says, oh, I, I sent an email to this person on such and such a date. So it's a way to sort of help you keep, you know, track of some of your matches. Um, and some various other tools here. Um, if somebody has uploaded their family tree, you'll see this little pedigree icon that you can click on and then be able to see their tree. Um, we do provide you, if they have filled it in, their most distant known ancestor on that direct paternal line. Um, and then you'll also see haplogroup information, and we also tell you when the person became, first became a match to you, so you can see which of, are your newest matches and, you know, who's been out there for a long time. Um, so this is basically the gist of the matches page. Um, there's all different filters up here. Um, you know, you can actually look at your matches at different marker levels. When you test the higher marker levels, you can always still see matches at the lower marker levels as well. Um, so you can always switch back and forth between them. Um, you can look at your matches in the entire Family Tree DNA database or in a specific project that you're participating in. There, those are some options. So there's all different types of things that you can do with your matches on this page. Um, okay, so now because there are five different marker levels, I want to briefly explain um, the difference between the different marker levels so you understand you know, what level is best for your testing. Um, when Family Tree DNA first launched uh, in 2000, the DNA technology, you know, was for, for, for this type of thing was still fairly young, and at the time, there was only a 12 marker test. And so as, as time has, you know, gone on since then, more markers have been added and, and higher level tests have been added to help customers further refine their results. So that's why, even though I'm going to, you know, here in a moment, that a certain level is the best level for genealogy, and then you might think, well, why are these other levels, lower levels available? Well, one, for historical reasons, and because they, they do also, they could still have some use for certain cases. So, um, so basically, as I said before, the, the um, more markers that are tested, Essentially, the, the more refined your matches are going to be, the, the, the closer they're going to be. So at the 12 marker level, if you have exact matches, they could be related anywhere within the past 29 generations. So it could be as close as your own father. It could be up to as far back as, uh, you know, you and that match sharing common ancestor 29 generations ago, which is something like seven to 900 years, I think, um, at 25 to 30 years per generation. So it's, so it's a very broad time frame. Um, and, and, and at the 12 marker level, there's also a very high chance of just kind of accidental, uh, or coincidental matches, not accidental, but coincidental matches. People who really don't have a recent connection with you, but just happen to have the same 12 marker values. Um, and so when you go to the next level at 25, you more than 
uh, more, reduce that time frame by more than half. And so now we're looking at about 13 generations. So now we're in more of the three to 400 year time frame, which if you have Western European ancestry and um, or even colonial American ancestry or anywhere else where your paper trail, your genealogy can go back three, 400 years, then, then that's, you know, at least uh, within that. But there are a lot of people who don't have paper trail going back even three, 400 years. Um, and so, um, and, and there's still also chances of sort of that coincidental matching at 25 markers. Um, 37 marker level, now we reduce that time frame, we, we about half it again um, to seven generations. And so now we're talking, uh, you know, more like the 200 year time frame. And so, and that's probably better for most people's genealogy. And then once you get beyond 37 markers, um, the higher marker levels, you'll see that the time frames don't drastically reduce anymore. They don't cut in half anymore. Um, so to go to 67 markers, an exact match may be related within the past six generations. And then at 111 markers, an exact match may be related within the past five generations. Now, it is important to understand that these are probabilities and that they're not definite. Um, these are at uh, a 95% probability level. So it means that, you know, if you have an exact 37 marker match, it doesn't guarantee that that person will share a common ancestor within seven generations. It's most likely the case, but it could still be further back. So, um, but, but, but given those numbers um, and the fact that the more markers you test and match on, kind of the more confident you can be, the 37 marker level has turned out to really be the best minimum level for genealogy. The 12 and 25 are very entry level. You, the matches, you know, are very broad. Um, you know, so if you're, you know, really trying to just, you know, kind of dip your toe in the water and see what it looks like, then, you know, 12 markers, you know, or 25 markers you could do. Um, but, you, you know, just be aware that there's going to be much more, you're going to match many more people than, than is relevant for your genealogy at those lower levels. So we do recommend 37 or higher. And, and um, you'll see on our main products page, we don't even list below 37 anymore. Um, we, we do still have the 12 and 25 available through our projects. Okay. And then um, uh, the final part of why DNA, uh, as I mentioned, the deep ancestry part and um, where everybody has a, has a haplogroup. Um, and so this is kind of a, an, an older haplogroup chart, um, but at least it kind of gives you an idea that each haplogroup is, is kind of specific to a certain general region, let's say. Um, and so, for example, haplogroups A and B and um, some branches of E originate in Africa. And there are some branches that are, you know, extremely common in Europe, like this haplogroup R1B, which is also known as RM269. Um, and so it's extremely common among Western Europeans. Um, some haplogroups kind of hover and around the, um, the Middle East and the Mediterranean, like haplogroup J and E1B1B. Um, but of course, people migrated around, so, you know, there are also... Even though, uh, and, and, uh, even though haplogroup J tends to be more um, Middle Eastern and, and Mediterranean and kind of North African, Southern European, you know, that type of area, there are also people in the British Isles with J. And that's because at some, some point their ancestors migrated there. Um, so, yeah, so, so, and everybody will get um, a basic haplogroup with the Y-DNA test. Okay, uh, so if you're wondering about prices, um, here are our current prices. Uh, the 12 and 25 marker tests, like I said, they're available only through projects. Um, the 37, 67, and 111 are available through projects and also through our, our main retail products page. Um, you get a discount on YDNA by ordering through a project because it, it's, it's kind of a group discount that you get. Um, and so these are the, the project prices. And almost everybody can find a project that's relevant to them. The vast majority of our projects are surname projects, but there are also um, projects for certain geographical areas, heritage projects, um, et cetera. So, um, certainly you can look for a project that is relevant to you. And we do recommend, like I said, at least the 37 marker level um, or higher. So some, some people prefer starting with 67. Some people prefer going for the full thing right off the bat and, and saying, well, I just want it all and let's do it all at once and <laughs> test 111 markers. Um, it is possible to actually upgrade your test later on. So if you were to start with 37 now and then later on decide that you want 67, uh, Family Tree DNA does store your DNA securely, 
Um, and so you can always order an upgrade and then uh, your DNA will just be pulled out of storage and, and retested. All right. So um, the next section is mcDNA. I'm going to go through this a little bit quicker because it's pretty similar to, to the Y-DNA. Um, a lot of the same ideas. Um, so the highlights of the mcDNA, you can't do surname studies for mcDNA because the maternal line uh, surname changes every generation. Your maiden names, uh, your last name is not the same as your mother's maiden name, which is not the same as her mother's, etc. But you're still going to get matches, um, or, you know, with people who share a common ancestor on that direct maternal line. And so if you both look at your family tree and look at your mother's 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 mother, etc., you know, ultimately somebody who you match in mcDNA, you'll share a common ancestor with. Um, so you also get a haplogroup for mcDNA. Uh, just like you do with Y-DNA, the haplogroups are different because, uh, of course, one comes from your mom, one comes from your dad. So, uh, you know, you're not going to have the same haplogroup for both. Um, and then mtDNA, uh, we offer two different test levels, um, but we actually have three levels of matching uh, because we, we, we no longer, uh, for historical reasons, we, we used to have three test levels, and we've actually eliminated the absolute basic test level. Um, for mtDNA, and so we now have what used to be our mid-level, which is called mtDNA Plus, um, and it tests two different regions of the mtDNA called HVR1 and HVR2, uh, and then we have our mt full sequence test, which tests the HVR1, HVR2, and something called the coding region, and the mt full sequence is the entire mtDNA. There is, there, there is no further upgrade than that. Um, it, 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 it's all of it. And so again, just like Y-DNA, the higher the test level, the better precision. Um, this is what your actual raw results look like for mtDNA. Um, essentially, what we're looking at is um, positions on the mtDNA molecule. There's a little over 16,000 of them. And we're comparing you to a reference sequence. And we, what we do is we report the positions that you differ at. Um, because that's much easier to report. And these are my full results. I've got some 20-something or 30-something differences out of 16,000 total positions on the mtDNA, uh, so much easier to read this. And then uh, you get a matches page, very similar to the Y-DNA matches page, um, where you, again, have um, uh, genetic distance at the full sequence level, um, you have your matches names, which again, I've blanked out for privacy. Uh, you can see their family trees. You can take notes, see their most distant maternal line ancestor, their haplogroup, and then their match date. Um, time frames for mtDNA, the time to most recent common ancestor, or TMRCA, they're more broad than yDNA, which is why we actually ended up eliminating the absolute basic level. We used to sell just HVR1 by itself. Um, and we actually were able to bring the price point down enough that it just didn't make sense to offer just HVR1 anymore. So um, the mtDNA plus test um, is now our entry level test. It tests the two different regions of the mtDNA. And at this level, there's a 50% probability that the most recent common ancestor lived within the past 28 generations, which is, again, that seven to 900 years. So time frame wise, it's kind of the same as a 12 marker yDNA test. Um, except in this case, it's a 50% probability. Um, so in, in the other half of the cases, the, your, um, an mtDNA plus match might share a common ancestor with you over 1,000 years ago. So it's still pretty broad. And then the MT full sequence, which we also call full mitochondrial sequence, or FMS, um, there's a 90% probability that your you and a match's common ancestor lived within the past 16 generations. So that's uh, four to five hundred years. And again, keep in mind, it could be, it's not that they absolutely lived four to five hundred years ago. It could be as close as your own mother up to that time frame in 90 percent of the cases. Ten percent of the cases could still be further back. Um, so the time frames are broad for mtDNA. That's just the biology of it. Um, if there was more mtDNA that could be tested to further refine this, we'd do it. Um, but there's not. This, this is what our biology gives us for mtDNA. So, um, so mtDNA can be a little more challenging because the time frames are so much you know, further back. Um, but uh, you know, definitely, you know, if you're looking at which mtDNA test, uh, you know, probably pretty obvious that the mtDNA plus is going to be more of, you know, kind of a medium resolution, uh, you know, test. Um, you'll get your, what's known as your backbone haplogroup. It's, it's your major 
haplogroup group, A, B, C, D, you know, et cetera. Um, with the full sequence test, it is the complete mtDNA test, the best resolution you're going to get for mtDNA. Um, and it also includes a, a more detailed, a more complete haplogroup group name. So for example, um, my haplogroup, group, I'm in haplogroup group K, and so with the mtDNA plus test, I just knew I was K. But then once I got the full sequence results, then I, it, uh, then my haplogroup uh, got more specific, and now it's K1A1B1A. A little bit of a mouthful, but basically that's just deeper branches or, or uh, you know, more branches um, on, on that mtDNA tree. And so here is actually a, a map for mtDNA to give you an idea here. Um, and, you know, you'll, you'll see the letters in different places, for example, whereas for yDNA, haplogroups, you know, A, B, and uh, E were in Africa. Well, in this and for mtDNA, A and B is actually in uh, in the Americas, Native Americans, and also in Asia. And then, um, and, and instead, haplogroup L is in Africa here. So it's just two different, you know, uses the same alphabet, but two completely different systems. And so the letters are in different places. Um, so, and again, these haplogroups represent your origins thousands to tens of thousands of years ago. Okay, so costs for mtDNA, um, the mtDNA plus test is $69, and the mt full sequence test is $199. Um, and uh, like I said, you know, really if you're looking for those really, uh, the, the best genealogical matches you can get out of DNA, mtDNA for your direct maternal line, you know, definitely recommend the full sequence test because of those time frames. So, um, so, you know, the best you're going to get out of it. Okay, so finally, um, Family Finder, we'll talk about a little bit. And again, this is the autosomal uh, test, and it also includes the X chromosome. So essentially, the highlights of Family Finder is that it can help you discover connections to descendants of your 16 great-great-grandparents, so basically up to your third cousins with confidence. Um, and then I... I uh, it actually it can go back more than that. It's not going to only give you third cousins. We actually go back to we we estimate up to um, up to fifth cousin, and then we also have categories called fourth to remote and fifth to remote, which means well we they you match some DNA with them, but they're and they're probably further than fourth or fifth cousin. So so you know with absolute confidence. Uh, you, you'll get matches with, you know, up to your third cousins and then the, the fourth and fifth cousins and beyond. Uh, some fourth and fifth cousins you'll share enough DNA with to match and some you won't. So it's just a, a little bit more of a, um, uh, of, of a um, you know, it's not definite that, you know, if you and a fourth cousin were to both test, so, some people will match their fourth cousins, some people won't. And it's because of how the autosomal DNA gets inherited, because you inherit only half of each parent's autosomal DNA, which means then that you um, inherited and, and your parents inherited only half of their parents' autosomal DNA. So, you know, on average, you have about 25% of your autosomal DNA from each, great, uh, each grandparent. And then on average, you have about... Um, 12.5% uh, from each great-grandparent, et cetera. So, you know, the more generations back the common ancestor is between you and a cousin, uh, the, the the less DNA you're actually going to share or, do, or going to have inherited from that common ancestor. And then it has to, you know, did you and the cousin actually both inherit the same portions of the DNA from that common ancestor? So that's why the further back you go, the more challenging Family Finder becomes. Um, but what we do is we estimate the degree of relationship with your matches based on how much DNA you actually share with them. And then we also provide a percentage breakdown of your ethnic or uh, biogeographical ancestry in a tool called My Origins. So um, this is the matches page for Family Finder. Um, I happen to have some of my known relatives in the database. I was lucky enough to be able to test both of my maternal grandparents. Um, and so I do have um, comparison with them in the database. And then I also have a cousin of one of my grandparents. Um, he's my first cousin twice removed. So I was able to actually assign these relationships. Um, you'll see that the, the match page here is a little different from the yDNA and mtDNA match page. Um, instead of having a genetic distance or steps, you're given other numbers such as shared CM, which means this, it, the CM is centimorgans, basically how much DNA do you share with that person. Um, and then for people who 
you don't necessarily know, you know, how they're related to you, you get an estimated relationship. So you'll see here from, this is part of my second page, I, I have a few um, estimated second to fourth cousins. So you're given a range for the estimate, and it could be somewhere within that range. Um, it, it could even be beyond, you know, the range or even closer. So it, it's really uh, an estimate based on the amount of shared DNA, but because that um, inheritance for the autosomal DNA can get so random and so crazy, uh, you know, the further back you go, uh, the uh, the less uh, confident, you know, those, those estimates can, can, can be because it, it just varies so much. So, um, but what we also give you here is because with autosomal DNA, these matches can be related on any line of your ancestry from your mom's side or your dad's side, and it can zigzag through maternal and paternal ancestors, so you can have a match from your mother's father's mother's father's mother's father, etc. Um, and so, and Family Finder can't tell you exactly which line of your ancestry um, somebody's related on, but and that's but that's where you use your paper trail. And so we do ask customers to um, upload the list of all their known ancestral surnames, and so that's one of the things that you can use here to help kind of you know figure out you know, how am I related to these people, see if you have common surnames, etc. So there's a lot more that goes into this, but just want to give you a basic idea of what you'll see. Um, and then there's also, and I know it's a little bit hard to see here, there's a tool called Chromosome Browser. And uh, with this tool, you can actually compare yourself with up to five people and see on each of these chromosomes where you actually match and how large the segments are. You can visually see that. Um, that, that you that you match with people on. So in this particular case, I have a lot of matching here because the uh, orange is my grandfather, the uh, blue is a cousin, and the green is my grandmother. And of course, with my grandmother and grandfather, I have about 25% of my DNA from each one of them. So um, I do have a lot here. For people who you're more distantly related to, you're going to have less sharing here. You're going to see less blocks of colors. So, so the chromosome browser is pretty powerful to be able to see that. Um, and then finally, we also have the um, My Origins, which is going to give you a percentage breakdown of your overall ancestry. Um, and so this is just an example. This is not mine. Um, mine is not exciting. I am, all of my grandparents, or my great-grandparents immigrated from Eastern Europe, all Ashkenazi Jewish. So mine basically came back almost 100% Ashkenazi Jewish, totally expected. Um, this particular person, as you can see, uh, is uh, has a... A, a very nice mix of different ancestries. He's, you know, almost 80% European, uh, or excuse me, almost, uh, oh, this guy, yeah, almost 70% European, but then he also has New World, which is Native American. He's got some Middle Eastern. He's got some Jewish. He has some African, some East Asian. He's got a little bit of everything here. Um, and so, uh, and on this page, you can then also see um, if your matches have opted in to be able to, to uh, allow you to see um, their their percentage breakdown, you can see that as well, um, and you can actually look at where different um, uh, uh, matches are on this map, uh, where, where their paternal and maternal line origins came from, etc. So pr pretty, pretty cool. Uh, and so the price of Family Finder is $99, um, so there's only one level for Family Finder, so you know, not a million different choices like YDNA and MTDNA. And, uh, and for, for both MTDNA and for um, Family Finder, the, the, the price is the same regardless of whether you order your project or not. It's only the YDNA that you actually get that project discount. Okay, so hopefully by now you've kind of formulated for yourself, you know, so, some ideas of, uh, you know, what tests would be best for you um, and, and what you're interested in, but just kind of want to summarize this. So it really depends on your own interests and goals, like I said in the beginning. Um, if you're trying to connect with a specific surname, um, then, you know, you may want to take, you know, you'll want to look at the Y-DNA test. And, you know, especially if, you, if you're looking at, for example, if you're male and you want to connect with other families with your own surname. Um, if you're female, you can't do the Y-DNA test, but you can have a male relative do it. And even if you're male, you might, you might want to have, for example, your maternal, a cousin from your maternal grandmother's family do a Y-DNA test for his direct, you know, for uh, that surname, for his direct maternal line. So, um, you know, so, so if you're trying to connect with a specific surname and you have a male with that surname available to test, 
um, then the Y-DNA test is, is the one that you're definitely going to want to do. Um, if you're researching your direct maternal line or, you know, trying to research an ancestor who's on your direct maternal line or on the direct maternal line of somebody else who is available to test, um, you know, then that's the MTDNA test. If you want to know your ethnic percentages, that's the autosomal test. And if you're interested in finding cousins from any line of your ancestry, both sides, you know, that's the autosomal test. Some people take more than one test. Uh, some, you know, men can take all three, as we'll see in a moment. So, uh, so test options for men, Y-DNA for the surname line, direct maternal line, MTDNA you can take for your direct maternal, and then family finder for all ancestral lines and those close family relationships. Um, and then for women, uh, women can take two of the tests, the MTDNA or the family finder, um, depending on, you know, what you're interested in. And, and I do have a little note down here because, you know, e even by the end of the presentation, I still sometimes get this question, is, you know, can women find information about their paternal side ancestors from their own DNA? And with Family Finder, absolutely. So Family Finder, you always have to keep in mind, the autosomal DNA you get from both parents. And so it, it Family Finder is the only test that a woman herself can take to connect with her paternal relatives um, because it, you do have your autosomal DNA from your dad. And, of course, women can recruit a male relative to take a Y-DNA test. So I've tested my brother, my maternal grandfather, a, a, a cousin of my dad's from his mother's side of the family. So, uh, you know, it, you have to sometimes branch out and not think about only testing yourself, but, you know, and, and think about, you know, again, depends on what your goals are and what you're trying to find out. Okay, so uh, to wrap things up here, um, I just want to quickly mention again Family Tree DNA Projects. We have over 8,000 thousand volunteer run projects um, and and this number I, I had to upgrade update it for this presentation from just a few months ago we were at 7,000 so we've got tons of projects um, all run by volunteers um, the vast majority are surname studies intended for Y-DNA study, Y-DNA comparison for specific, specific surnames. However, we do have other types of projects. We have um, geographical and heritage projects. So um, there are geographical projects for people with ancestry or, or origins from a specific region. Uh, just as an example, there's a, a, uh, there's a Polish project, people who trace their ancestry back to Poland. Um, there's, a, you know, there's a German project. Um, I actually run uh, specifically for people with Jewish ancestry from Belarus, um, I have a project you know, for that. And then there's more general, um, for example, there's the Jewish Heritage Project, which anybody with Jewish ancestry can join. Um, it doesn't matter what geographical region. There, there's a uh, you know, Native American project. There's, uh, I think there's probably an African uh, American project or something like that. Uh, trying to remember off the top of my head somewhere, but, and so there are different types of kind of heritage projects as well, and they're sort of grouped under geographical um, in our database, so that's why I've sort of listed them together. Um, and then we also have haplogroup studies, and so if you've done a Y-DNA or MT-DNA test and know your haplogroup, once you know your haplogroup, you can join the appropriate study for your haplogroup. So if you're interested in learning more about the deep ancestry and about your haplogroup, that's, you know, the project to join. So you can join as many projects as is relevant to you, um, and, um, and like I said, there's no charge for participating, participating in projects. Um, so how do you learn more? So hopefully this, uh, presentation gave you a really great overview, I'm hoping, of all the different types of DNA tests that we have available and what kinds of things you'll see when you, um, get your results back. And, uh, but if you want to learn more now or later, even once you test and have your results, um, we have a really extensive learning center. Um, that's at familytruedna.com slash learn. Uh, there, there's a link to that in the resources menu within your MyF2DNA account, and uh, there's a link from our uh, Family Tree DNA homepage, et cetera. Um, we have discussion forums where customers can, you know, ask questions of each other and, and chat with each other about their results. Um, some, you know, really knowledgeable and, you know, longtime customers and volunteer project administrators hang out there. And then, you know, customers who just started testing, customers who have been testing for a long time. Um, I spend some time there answering questions where I can. Um, and then, of course, we always have, if, if you need more, uh, you know, specific, uh, you know, help, you know, directly with deciding on a test for yourself, um, you can always contact our customer support team. Um, and to do that, you'll go to um, our, our website to our contact link. The direct link is familytreedna.com slash 
contact.aspx, um, but you can also get to that from our homepage. There is a, a contact us uh, link there. And so our customer support team is available Monday through Friday from um, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And uh, you can also email uh, our customer support team from that contact page as well. So you can either call or email. Okay, and um, really quick upcoming webinars. Um, I am going to have the uh, registration links for these up on the webinars page uh, shortly after this webinar ends, with probably within an hour or two after this webinar is over. I uh, didn't get a chance to put them up there, but um, the upcoming webinars that we have is next Thursday, November 13th. Um, this webinar is geared toward people who already have their results, and it's going to be um, why DNA explain help my matches have a different surname. Um, so basically, as I, I talked here about why DNA today, usually people are looking for same surname matches, but there are many different cases where on a Y-DNA test you might actually match a different surname and there are very valid reasons for that. You know, some people who aren't familiar with it automatically think that, oh, somebody's father wasn't who they thought it was. That's not always the case. And so um, I am going to be doing a presentation next week that specifically addresses all the different scenarios um, of Y-DNA matches with different surnames and kind of how to proceed from here. Um, and then tentatively, um, very tentative at the moment, it might have to move. Um, the following Thursday, November 20th, I'm going to do a presentation um, called The Ideal Life of a Family Tree DNA Kit. And uh, the basic premise behind this is what happens from the moment that you first order a test at Family Tree DNA um, and, and get kind of the whole process until you get your results back. Um, trying to get some information out there to help people better understand kind of how the testing process works. Um, and so I'm, like, I'm hoping to have that ready by November 20th. Um, I have some things we need to work through. So I'm going to make the registration available for it now. Um, if the date has to change, then everybody who registers will be notified and the website will be updated and you won't have to re-register. The, basically the, the date of the whole webinar will be changed and everybody We'll, we'll move over with it. So, um, but I'm hoping, I'm aiming for two weeks from today. Um, and so also visit our website, um, which I have up at the top, familytreedna.com slash learn slash f2dna slash webinars, kind of a long uh, URL. But if you go to our learning center, um, right on the learning center homepage, you'll see the link for webinars there as well. Um, you can also see there, you can uh, register for upcoming live webinars. You can also see um, the archived uh, recordings of our past webinars, and there's a lot there. Um, and I've done webinars on all three major tests on how to read and understand your results, um, uh, some you know beginner, intermediate, and very advanced webinars. Um, there's also some more general um, you know types of things there, like a tour of my FTDNA. Um, and uh, an intro to genealogy in general for anybody who's actually new to doing genealogy research. So definitely check that out. And then we also have an announcements list um, where we'll be um, where we announce our upcoming webinars, and you can uh, subscribe to that from our website as well. All right, and finally, uh, questions. So so there were just a few questions that got posted during the presentation. Um, so that I ended up. Uh, deciding to leave uh, for the end of the Q&A because I knew this was going to run a little bit long. Thankfully, I didn't run too much over my hour. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the questions that have already been posted. Um, if you have any questions that you haven't uh, uh, posted yet that you'd like to ask, please feel free. Um, and I will take a few minutes to go ahead and um, take a look at these. Okay. Um, so... Uh, all right, so, so questions that are about somebody's specific test, I'm probably not going to be able to answer here. Um, I'm, I'm, I really would prefer to kind of try to more address general questions about the tests. Um, if you have questions about your own test results, um, I do recommend either contacting our customer support team or um, even asking the question on our discussion forum, and then either uh, I or somebody else um, uh, there will uh, be able to uh, hopefully answer your question for you. Um, so let's see. Uh, so one question was, um, if you have zero matches at the 37 marker level, is it worth doing the 67 or 111? So um, 
people have different opinions on that, um, and so it, it really depends. Um, if you have no matches at all on the 37 marker, it's usually not likely that you're going to have matches on the 67 or 111. There, there's a small caveat to that. The more markers that you test, the more leeway we give on how many differences you can have on your results and still be considered a match. So for example, at the 37 marker level, you can mismatch on up to four markers and still be considered a match. If you mismatch on five markers out of 37, then we don't consider you a match and you don't see that person. Um, at the 67 marker level, we actually allow up to seven differences. So, you know, so let's say, for example, you don't match somebody on 37 because you only match on, uh, you, you mismatch five of the markers, you only match on 32 out of the 37. Well, and then let's say you both go to 67, theoretically, as long as you don't have many more mismatches at, you know, on, on those additional markers that you test, if you end up with, you know, a mismatch of only seven out of 67, you know, in the end, then they could actually show up as a match. So, so some people say, you know, that, you know, it, it, it could be worth it. And, you know, it, so it, it's not a definite that you're going to have matches, you know, at, at a higher marker level if you don't have it at a lower marker level. So that, that's really going to really be a personal decision. Do you want to kind of take that gamble, um, you know, and, and, you know, spend the money for the additional testing? And that, that's really completely up to you. Um, okay, so if I order today, how long does it take to get the test and how long for results? So um, all of our kits are mailed out the, the business day after they are ordered. So if you order today, your kit actually should go into the mail tomorrow. Um, within the U.S., it takes, um, it, it can take, it should take about a week for you to get the kit. Sometimes it takes up to two weeks. It could take five to ten business days. We send it out right away, but but the postal service, because they're, you know, people think that they should get their mail within two days, like you do with, you know, regular letters, but because the kits are packages, um, they actually have to be handled differently by the postal service, and, and it can take longer uh, to actually get it. So, but within two weeks, you should get it. Um, if you're outside of the U.S., it could take longer. It could take up to three or four weeks. If you're really far outside of the U.S., like Australia, sometimes those kits can take even longer. So, um, you know, so do be aware of that. You know, so we, we, we send them out pretty much the next day, and then it's up to the Postal Service. Um, we do actually have tracking on all of the kits, and so shortly after your kit is mailed, um, I think within a couple of days, you should actually receive an email that um, contains your tracking number, so you can actually track um, the kit through the Postal Service. So um, once you get your kit, do the swabs, mail it back to us. It's going to take time to come back to us as well. Once we do get it back and into our system, um, then it depends on what test you ordered. Family Finder, uh, typically results are within three to four weeks. Um, Y-DNA testing is typically within, I think the current time frame is like six to eight weeks. And then MT-DNA testing, I think, is between six and ten weeks right now. So, um, and, and those are all estimates, uh, you know, so, and, and that's assuming that, you know, that, that the test goes smoothly and that we get results on the first try, um, you know, so, so do keep in mind that, you know, any time frame we give you for stuff like that, it's always going to be an estimate. Um, we certainly do try to meet those time frames, uh, but there, there are some cases where things do take longer than, you know, everybody would like, so just be aware of that. Um, uh, can I order and pay for my parents, send the test kit for each of them, and get the results to me? Absolutely. You can manage an account for another person. Um, each person who's tested has get, gets their own DNA kit with a kit number, and those kit numbers are actually your accounts as well. And so for each person you test, you're going to have a separate account. Um, but to order for somebody else, just make sure that your email address is on the order when you place the order. Um, because we because we do everything online, the email address is basically the kit owner of record essentially. Um, so, but yeah, so but you can pay for it. You, you can have it mailed to yourself or to somebody else. Um, that's up to you. Um, uh, Fran asked um, if I if I have taken two different Family Finder tests with two different companies, should they be combined? So I think you mean that you've taken two different autosomal tests, um, and um, I, I don't know what you mean by combined. There's really no way to combine two different tests. Um, 
so uh, you know, we Family Tree DNA does accept transfers uh, from of the autosomal results from other companies. So um, the two companies that that also do similar testing are um, Ancestry and 23andMe. And so cut people who have done the autosomal testing there can transfer into our database. But if you've already taken the Family Finder test with us, um, then you um, then there's no purpose in transferring your results from the other companies because it'll be the same. If you have if you tested other family members with the other companies, then absolutely you can go ahead and transfer into our database. Uh, transfer theirs. Um, let's see. Uh, so uh, Bill asked a question that I'm just going to re repeat here, but uh, he, uh, Bill, you're going to probably have to. Um, Oh, no, actually, no, I can't answer this question. Okay, so um, Bill asked, um, he did a Y-DNA test to find out about his Native American ancestry, um, but his Native American was supposed to come from his paternal grandmother, so he wants to know if the Y test was the correct one to take. So the, the Y-DNA, you have to remember, is direct paternal line only. It's father's, 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 father, et cetera. It's only the direct male line. So unfortunately, no, for that situation, the Y-DNA test is not going to tell you about your paternal grandmother's um, Native American ancestry. What you can do is you can uh, consider taking the autosomal uh, DNA test, the family finder, which will give you that percentage breakdown. And if you do have Native American ancestry, it'll give you a percentage of that. Um, the other option is um, that if your father is living, then you could consider testing him for mtDNA. But again, you know, make sure that you said it's through his paternal grandmother, but was it from her mother? So you always have to keep in mind that the that mtDNA is strictly mother's, 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 mother. So if the Native American came from your paternal grandmother's father, then and not the mother, then mtDNA won't work. So yeah, it's definitely it, it, it when trying to figure out who can do what test, it probably helps to actually have your tree drawn out in front of you <laughs> um, or in your program. And so you can actually trace back that direct paternal line or direct maternal line um, if you're looking at Y-DNA or mtDNA testing to, to see, you know, who are the viable candidates, um, you know, for those types of tests. So hopefully that helped you out there. But, but I hope that even though the Y-DNA didn't tell you about your Native American, certainly hope that um, it was able to connect you with people from your paternal grandfather's family. So, uh, you know, that, that's certainly the goal of the Y-DNA there. All right. Well, I think that is all of the questions that um, I currently see that I can answer. Like I said, there were a couple questions here that were specific to people's own kits and results. And so um, I do recommend that you uh, either, like I said, contact your customer support team or even post on our forum if you'd like. Um, and somebody should be able to, you know, help you out a little bit there. So I hope all this information was useful for everybody today and gave you a really good idea of the, uh, YDNA, mtDNA, and autosomal test. Um, and uh, so hopefully uh, we'll uh, see you guys uh, at Family Tree DNA, and hopefully we'll see you guys at future Family Tree DNA webinars as well. So um, remember that this webinar has been recorded, and uh, the recording of the webinar will be online uh, by usually within 24 hours. Um, you guys will also receive a follow-up email that will have uh, a link to the recording. Uh, as well, and, and you should get that tomorrow as well. So thank you, everybody, for attending, and uh, certainly hope you all enjoy the rest of your day. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.